Are we eating these on cam? Yeah. Great. I don't know if we'll use it, but I'll film it just in case. Okay. I have some fries too. Do you like McDonald's fries? Yeah, they're the best. Who makes that? So Who good. Who has better fries than McDonald's fries? So good. No one. I can't think of anyone. None that are like this. Like I like Chick Fil A fries, but those oh, are yeah. totally fries different are ball game too. of You're fry. Right. You're right. Those are excellent fries. Shake Shack fries. Shake Shack fries are good. Mm-hmm. Are we going in? Yeah, this okay. is a uh, McRib. I haven't had a McRib in ages. McRib mukbang. Okay. Wait, Th- hold on. You have to wait for me. This is my third one since they brought him back. Yeah, you called me at like 6 p.m. the other night randomly like... You want to go get Will McRib? you go to McDonald's for me? All right. Oh, wow. This is... It's more fun busy. to do something naughty with other people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. How do they replicate rib flavor without actually using rib? This isn't real rib? Are you serious? I mean, what is it, you know? I thought it was real ribs until this moment. I mean, maybe it is, but it's, I mean, how do you get ribs with no bone? Mm. I would like to see, have you seen the McDonald's chicken nugget video of how they mm-hmm. make chicken nuggets? I would like to see that for McRibs. It's probably the same shit. Mm-hmm. I think I should specify. This has 1% more beef than a McDonald's chicken nugget. Mm. Or pork. I um, asked for extra pickles and extra onions. Mm. Makes a difference. On the burgers, too, you will have to ask for extra pickles and onions. I am getting I more like, of a crunch. Yeah, I like the bread on this, too. Mm-hmm. Like a sourdough or something? Mm-hmm. Like, I would use this bread for something else. Do you think that the reason they don't keep this on the menu is just because when they bring it back, then it kind of blows up each time? Because they've brought it back so many times. It's like either keep it or don't. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it is like a cool thing to do. Or maybe like their fake McRib factory is closed during the year. Mm-hmm. I personally don't think the McRib is that amazing. So maybe it just doesn't do that well year round. That's what I was thinking. Because mm-hmm. I eat it when it's there seasonally because mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for marketing. Yeah. But if it was on the menu permanently, I don't think I would ever get it. Maybe it's because it's not really, like, in the same vein of what McDonald's is about, which is, like, burgers. Hmm. I bit my tongue. Ow. Why did I do that? I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I love McDonald's pickles. Yeah, McDonald's, uh, I think their quality of food keeps getting better, too. You think so? Personally. Because I remember, I've I've always eaten McDonald's. I've never been an anti-McDonald's guy. But there was a phase where I was like, it's kind of the shittiest fast food. Their cheeseburgers were just whatever. But now when I have a quarter pounder, that's a quality burger. Well, that's... Fresh ground beef. Well, that's the difference. Yeah. If you're still ordering regular cheeseburgers from McDonald's, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Quarter pounder, though, that meat doesn't get frozen. It's better meat than the regular cheeseburger. And you can taste the difference in it for sure. But maybe also your taste buds are changing. It's the time. Would you give a shout out to McDonald's every single episode of your podcast if they gave you just free McDonald's? Mm. Was that good enough to sponsor your podcast, Free Mickey D's for Life? But they're, then they'd be a lifelong sponsor, too. I guess so, because what's the harm in just shouting them out every episode? Mm. <clears throat> that seems easy enough, but at the same time, I don't eat McDonald's that frequently to the point where I'm like... McDonald's for life. If I got free McDonald's for life, it'd probably be bad for me because uh-huh. then I would eat McDonald's mm-hmm. every day. I guess I can go get coffees all the time. 
mm-hmm. and treat other mm-hmm. people to it. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Thank what you a shitty thing to treat other people with. <laughs> <laughs> hey, want to get some McDonald's? <laughs> it's free. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be cool when they're like, why is it free? They sponsor my podcast. That's kind of cool. It's a big company. Well, I saw Christina P. had some McDonald's partnership. I couldn't tell if that was real or not, though. With it was them, real. She was at a. It was. Okay. She was at that festival in San Francisco, and she was doing like the McDonald's booth and like. Oh, cool. And then I think they like, got mad at her because you know she says crazy shit. Right. Yeah, they've had a few incidents where I'm like, I can't tell if they're really sponsored by that company or not because they're obviously a huge podcast, so any company would sponsor them, but they do it in such a joking manner. I'm like, so are you sponsored yeah. by McDonald's or not? I think they were. Yeah. Like that was good. Out. That was good. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have a way harder time getting through life than the average person, Ari. I, I, I don't know why anybody would listen to this. I know I won't. Ari? Your advice single-handedly broke up my marriage. You're an awful person. You're 24 years old. Why would I listen to you? Why would you be giving therapy and advice to people who clearly need it? It doesn't make any sense, Ari. This is a horrible idea. You're listening to You're listening to Unlicensed. 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 Unlicensed therapy with Ari Mannis. Ari Mannis. I had a... Uh... To tie us over until <laughs> our next meal in an hour. I had a. Uh, I forget the name of the food. I think McDonald's makes me stupid. Really? I, I had a. I think- what's a ground beef mushed together a bunch of meat? Meatloaf. Oh. I can't believe I forgot what meatloaf was called. I had meatloaf right before you got here. From. From Stouffer's Microwavable Meatloaf. You love, you live like a single father. And I'll be honest, the Stouffer's Microwavable Meatloaf tasted the exact same as the McDonald's McRib. Interesting. Not really, but kind of. So you just had like double McMeat. I just had two, <laughs> yeah, two McMeats. Stouffer's is great. Stouffer's is a great frozen food company. Yeah, of the microwavable meals... Stouffer's, if I had to pick one, it's Stouffer's. And I learned that from my very f- second girlfriend that broke my heart. She was always a big Stouffer's fan, and I've kept that in the in my life. Who? How old were you when you had your second girlfriend? I think we started dating when I was 20 years old. Oh, okay, so like a little 19, bit later. 19 or 20. Yeah. Oh, okay. First girlfriend was at 17. Mm-hmm. Lost my virginity to her. Went to prom with her. Wow. Met her family. Am I allowed to vape in here? Yeah. <gasps> you lost. You left your vape no. in your car? Oh, my God. I would have freaked out. It'd be good for you. I would have been fine. You got to quit. You got to mind your business. No, that's your, your business is my business. I quit at the beginning of COVID. And what made you kick it back into gear? Well, what made me quit it in the first place was I was staying with my mom at the very beginning of COVID. And, and she wanted you to quit? She was no. like me? Oh. No, my mom, well, I mean, I'm sure she's not, like, a fan of me vaping, mm-hmm. but um, she smokes cigarettes and has, like, my whole life, and so whenever she sees me smoking, she's like, why would you do that? But it's more so I saw her smoking at the house, and I was like, I don't want to do that. You wanted to participate without participating? You wanted to smoke with her, but without no. smoking cigarettes? No, oh, I just didn't, oh, watching I was her made watching you quit. her, and I was like... I don't want to do that. And then as soon as I left her place, I was like, I do want I'm to back. do that. Mm-hmm. You used to smoke cigarettes too, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess vape's better than that. I guess. We, who knows? The only person in my life that's ever quit cigarettes is Abby. He's been cold turkey off for years Yeah, now. that's crazy. And he was one of those guys who would go on and off. A couple times. Yeah. yeah. He tried quitting a few times. It Mark Marin. Fr- yeah. He's been off for a long time. He does the lozenges. Marin does, mm-hmm. yeah. Abby does nothing. Yeah. It's pretty good. Pretty impressive. Pretty He's good. got a lot of willpower for his health and image. If he applied that same willpower to, like, comedy, he'd be a national touring headliner. You know what's interesting, and I know that people have made this point before, but I just put it into my own 
terms. Like juuling, no one knows, at least when it first came out, no one knows, no one knew what it did to your body, but everyone yeah. was like, this is, I don't smell like cigarettes anymore. It's easy, it's quick, whatever. And then the vaccine people are like, I'm not going to do that. And I know that people have made that point before, but I just thought about it in terms of juuling because I'm like. Oh, doing juul is kind of like taking this pre-vaccine. Vaccine, yeah. Yeah. Because most know. people don't care. They'll do it. Why can't we just not vape? That we just got to vape the vaccine. Put it in some salt. Some. Yeah. If they turn into like a salt. hip sort of activity. Flavor it. Blueberry. Yeah, they need to make vaccines cool. You need to have people with face tattoos getting the vaccine. <laughs> in the commercials. Yeah, we need Abby in a it vaccine It should be commercial. diverse, face-tatted people getting the vaccine and then partying after. Oh, that'd be a good way to sell it, too. That's like, a great... Oh, look, now I could party safely. Yeah. You don't have the vaccine? What are you, stupid and irresponsible? They need to make a dare campaign for vaccines yeah. and shame people who don't take them. I'm not going to take it. And everyone has to wear a patch on their arm that says if they are vaxxed or not. Then you're getting that into kind of— That was a reference of, to uh, Hitler times. Oh, I didn't even pick it. But yeah, I was going to say, then you're getting into that the yeah. government has too much control. Yeah. I'm not taking the vax, are you? Um, I am not opposed to taking the vax. I just want to weigh a beat. But I'll tell you what I already started doing. If I'm talking to like a girl on Tinder, you're or already something, saying, "Oh, I'm gonna take the vaccine." I told her I took it already. Oh, that way she'll meet up with me. Yeah. She'll be like, "Yeah, but I'm kind of worried about COVID." Oh, I took the vax. We're I fine. I got the vaccine. Yeah, I just completely lie about it. I went to. Is Brazil. that rape? Um, it's a uh, verbal. It's verbal rape. Verbal assault. It's ver- <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's lying. It's lying. That's it's what it for is. For sure lying. So it's manipulation. You're not getting the vaccine. Absolutely not. I'm not 30 in two I'm 31 years, years not old. Not in 5 years. Never. Never. I'm 31 years old. Okay. I'm super healthy. Okay. I obviously eat a lot of bad food, but you eat like condi- shit. but health condition wise, I'm not overweight. I can go run a mile right now. I don't have any illnesses that I am aware of. So if I get COVID, I'm fine. So I'd rather just get COVID. Yeah, but you also vaccine. aren't quarantining or being necessarily safe. So if Not you get all. COVID, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. So then the people who are worried about it, they go get vax. I see what they you mean. They could get vaccine. I see what I'm you mean. I'm fine with that. I'm not anti-vax. Like no one in the world should get vaccinated. I'm just not going to get vaccinated. Have you been, have you gotten like other flu shots ever? Never. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I just got my regular flu shot. Yeah. Because I don't want to look like a little like cucked out. Uh, like <laughs> red-pilled fool at the doctor's office. They kind of bullied me. They said, get the flu shot. They were like, you yeah. should get the flu shot. And I was like, sure. So yeah. I got the flu shot. Yeah, you're there anyway. The COVID vaccine, I am down to get. I don't care. I mean, I just pounded a McRib. So, like, I'm down to just put stuff in my body. You're right. The McRib is worse for me than any flu shot. For sure. Or, like, getting... I'm not. I'm not one of those people that thinks I'll take the flu shot and have a retarded child. Yeah. I'm not that person yeah. i just don't like needles okay i don't like the experience of someone giving me a shot yeah i mean it's extremely painless but i guess i understand i wouldn't say painless it's not that painful it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable. for a second and you it's have to get a, you get, have a little a drop of blood and a little boo-boo yeah i don't like boo-boos Guys are so weak <laughs> compared to women. And not in like a uh, women are stronger, but like our bo- like we're just so used to painful things. Right. Like yeah. like IUDs or getting like our eyebrows or coochie wax. Big black and like, penis. Yeah, giant. Inside your body. And yeah, every Having whole. a baby's head come out of your. Yeah, like our bodies are just built to like handle pain. Yeah, I agree that women are more elastic and they're better at. Uh, or orifices and taking things in and out of their orifices. I wouldn't consider your shoulder an orif. Hey, orifice. any hole in your body is an orifice. Yeah, but there wasn't a hole there before you take the freaking shot. Right. So you're creating an orifice, and I'm saying women oh are better okay. at that. Um, but I'm an. Old, Did I say the word right? I don't know because I started saying it and I wasn't Orif- sure. Orifice. Orifice. O- orifice. Orifices. 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 I I agree. If I were to. Um, comment on my weaknesses as a person. I'm not the best at taking things into my orifices. 
Yeah. I and I'm willing to admit that. But I also think in terms of you with the vaccine and stuff, I think you're just a very stubborn person <laughs> and you don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Sure. And I think that that's why your mom hates you. <laughs> um, and also. She's like that too, though. Me yeah. and my mom are both stuff. I got that. Do you think her, you're very maybe. similar to your mom and that's why you guys kind of butt heads? In certain ways, yes, but not not really. Overall, yeah. no. I, yeah. I'm going to wait on the vaccine because... Yeah, you want to wait and see if there's any side effects. Yeah, especially... All, if I was a dude, I would take it. But I think, <laughs> Wait, why if you're well, a dude? I, let me explain okay, okay, because okay. women eventually give birth if they want to, if everything's working down there. Um, and I want to one day have kids. Mm. And so I think with the vaccine being so quickly... Oh, you're saying it might affect your future kid. Potentially reproductive. I don't... We're I would getting have to into look up kind to of see conspiracy if, theory sh shit. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, I don't, I, I would have to look at the science to say that it's 100% cleared on. You I know, think, statistically and, speaking, and I'm not, I obviously haven't done any research into this, but I think course. I'm right. Sure. Statistically speaking, if you take flu shots or vaccines, it can have an effect on your baby, but it's such a low, 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 low. It, the, the benefits very much outweigh the risk of something bad happening. But when I got the flu shot, it's the same flu shot that people have been getting for... But they make a new flu shot every single year. Is that true? Yeah. Wait, Fl really? You didn't know that? Yeah. So you know the <laughs> flu shot you take? Yeah. If you go to the doctor next year, they're going to say, did you take the flu shot this year? And you go, no, I took it last year. They're going to go, yeah, it's a different flu shot. I really? Thought, you didn't know that? Yeah, you, yeah. You coming from the guy that who's I'm 100% sure shot. of. Yeah, that I'm 100% sure of. Every oh, year, boy. the flu, there's a new flu shot for that year's flu huh. because the flu changes oh. and morphs. Yeah, well, then That's I the other thing about COVID-19. You're taking this COVID-19 shot. Now, next year, you're going to have to take the flu shot and the COVID-20 shot. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. Just be a person, get it, and, over, and get over it. Yeah. You know people who have gotten it. Ahmed? Mm-hmm. Uh, Santino. Mm -hmm. Who else do we know? A few people. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin, Aunt Aaron, mm. got it. And guess what? They're all doing just fine. Yeah. The only people that aren't doing fine are great grandparents. Yeah. Not even most grandparents are doing fine. Great grandparents are. Do Should we change the subject? We can because if you want to. If we don't change the subject, then if someone's listening to this a year from now, we're going to sound like The idiots. podcast is dated. Or it's very dated. Yeah. Very dated podcast. I mean, every single podcast this year is going to be extremely dated. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be COVID cancel culture. Those are the cancel two Cancel culture might topics. still be here, though. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's probably still going to be here. I'll probably be canceled any day now. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I've been telling girls I took the vaccine. Can I be canceled for that? Probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. I think you just need a bigger following to get canceled. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You can get, like, micro-canceled. I've been micro-canceled. Right. Have you actually been micro-canceled? Well, that's the thing. It's micro-canceled. So it's like when you have a small group of people attacking you, but their efforts are but not... I've been attacked, but I think to, to for it to be called canceled, you have to lose, lose. a job or something, uh, you know? Yeah, something I guess it's negative good. I don't really have to any you jobs. Besides hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you got fired from a club. No, we can't book you anymore. Your date is canceled because mm. of you said this. It's then, not like if I get fired from the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> That's canceled. You okay. can be canceled from the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. I bet you people have been. Manager grabs a waitress's ass, boom, canceled. Yeah. Or she gets to leave work early that day, and she's <laughs> like, well, you got to balance If you don't out. tell anyone, I'll let you leave early. Yeah. At least try that before yeah. she goes to corporate. What jobs have you had? Have you had any food service jobs? I can't picture uh, you being like a at a restaurant. Yeah. Does the comedy store count? No. Does John Lovett's Comedy Club count? No. I'm talking about handing people food, taking people's orders. I've bust food at the comedy store Not before. Not bust food. Where you go? Uh, Hi, I've never been a waiter. No, okay. I've never been a waiter. I've been a bartender before. Really? For a short period. Yeah. Did you get fired? Uh, no. The place went out of business. Mm. Mm hmm. But I wasn't very good at it. You're having but your brother okay. book this podcast? No, just you. I was saying, I was thinking of guests for tomorrow, and he goes, get Allie. And I go, okay, will you message her for me? We were in the same room <laughs> during the whole time. That was the weirdest thing ever. It was? Yeah, I was like, why is Jonah hitting me up to do Ari's podcast? He wanted, he was excited to do it. Uh -huh. He just wanted to talk to you. Jonah likes Jonah him. likes me. Yeah, Jonah likes you. I like that. Do you like Jonah? I love Jonah. In case you're listening, Jonah's my youngest brother. He's 21 years old. 
Good kid. Great kid. Dyed his hair black. Looks really stupid. It does. Yeah. That. It doesn't fit him. Yeah. It's just not the right tone. Yeah. It was. He people could make go. Mistakes. He could go darker. But I think black is a harsh. It look. looks about as good as the blue hair looks on Allie. It's purple. Purple hair. Yeah, I'm not a huge. I'm fan just kidding. Of this. It looks. It's fine. It you're looks al- fine. you're always doing shit with your hair, yeah. so it's kind of like I don't even notice it anymore. You'll come in with a different green, and I'll be like, "Yep." Well, I was thinking of going like natural brunette, and I was like, "That would freak people out." If I just went completely You're complete natural. natural, yeah, I would like to see that. Have I ever seen you with that? I don't think so. Yeah, probably when I yeah when I was like first. Even then, I feel like it was blonde. I can't remember. It was like a light brown. You look like a character in Cyberpunk 2077. Mm -hmm. Have you played that game yet? No, but I wish I could make my tits bigger. You can. Oh, yeah, I guess I could. No, I like my boobs. Have you touched my boobs? I think I think I I think yeah. In front of people. Yeah. Not not one on one. That's weird. Yeah, no. I only I only (laughs) kissed you in public. (laughs) Yeah. We do I I used to do a bit at the store where yeah, I walk, you'd walk around, around kissing and say, dudes. Kiss me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I <laughs> just have would. all my friends kiss me. Yeah, yeah. And everyone. It's pretty cool though. It was pretty fun. It's pretty cool. I mean, it probably says something about your past that we aren't aware of. <laughs> probably. But, but it's fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely not aware of whatever it is that causes me to. Yeah. Do maybe that. like an old man kissed you when you were like six or something. For sure. Like I wouldn't French be surprised. Do. I asked my mom, oh. Maybe you were like molested, but just with kisses. My gra- I remember specifically, my grandpa's a good dude. He's dead. He died when I was younger. But he had a mustache, and so every time he kissed me, it, like, gave me the creeps. Cause it was, Your like, own grandpa t- gave you the creeps. Yeah. Well, just the mustache. It wasn't that it was, like, creepy. It was just, like, weird. And maybe that's now why you kiss Brian Holtzman? <laughs> I love Brian Holtzman. <laughs> He's so funny. He's so funny. So I had funny. no idea who he was until I worked at the comedy store. I still don't know who he is, yeah. but he's awesome. And well, I funny. found out my best friend that you know, Marguerite. Her oh, mom yeah. and Brian went to school together. Oh, I thought you were gonna say we're like went dated. No, together. but they went to school together. They were what like friends in school. What did she say school. about him? Was he? Did he used to be just a sane normal? I don't know. Human? She was just saying like how much she loves him. Yeah. I think he has a good heart, even though I don't know him. Yeah. He puts on such a character that it's like. Can I ever see the real Brian Holtzman? Yeah. I also didn't fully understand Don Barris until I worked at the comedy store. Not that I, like, fully understand him now, but, like, seeing him every night closing out the OR, like, you, it just, like, completed the picture. That that should be studied by science. Well, the fact that the Brian Ding Holtzman? Dong show has been going... Oh, you're talking about Brian. I mean, uh, Don, Don Barris. Barris yeah. yeah, Don Barris closing out the original yeah. room. That and should the fact be... that the Ding Dong show has been going on for as long as it has been. Night after night after night? Yeah. Crazy. I just I don't see the appeal for him of both those things. They would both get so old to me. Well, it has such a weird cult following. It's entertaining. Yeah, for yeah. sure. If, if someone comes to the comedy store and says, I've never seen Don Barris or the Ding Dong show, I'd say I highly recommend you see it at least once. I would tell people if they were leaving late, I'd be like, just stay for a few minutes. I was like, just stay in there for like five minutes and watch him, and then you can leave. Yeah, you're, you've made but it this once, far. But once you're in there for five minutes, you're going to be attacked if you try and leave. Like, Don is not going to let you leave. So eventually they stay for the whole thing, and they're like, that was crazy. There's two types of comedy store regulars. The kind that goes to the main room several times throughout the year, and then there's the kind that goes to the original room and stays for the entire show. There's two different comedy fans right there. Oh, yeah. I just realized that this is my bad side. It is? Yeah, I think Should, I would have given you this side. No, if it's I'd all know. right. I like to stay humble. I don't think you have a bad side. You're so beautiful. Oh, my God. Thank you. So just, I mean, you're not as beautiful as either of your sisters, but you're really beautiful still. Why haven't you had me on the podcast sooner? It's kind of one of those things where like. We're you, just so close. Uh, yeah, I was like, I know I could have you. Yeah. So, so it's I'm like, like, what's the point of burning that now? Day. Even though I'll probably have you multiple times, but it's just like, I was, I, it's more fun, or not more fun, but I always try to get the people who I'm like, I'll never get them again. Yeah. Yeah. That's I also it. like the clips that you do for this podcast. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. I need to do more of them. I get lazy. Yeah. I need to get a producer like you have. But then I just don't trust my trust anyone else because I'm so good at it. See, I wish but that I knew how to edit and do stuff so that way I wouldn't put all of my 
faith or like all of my else. yeah trust into someone else and then have to go back and forth like oh could i have this part clipped mm-hmm. or that but once you're making money it doesn't matter then you then you're like well that's the it. goal i'm just hoping that that yeah. happens soon so i can be uh, like let's get the pro team i can't believe team. it hasn't happened already i know me too well yeah. covid it could have <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's true where would we be if it wasn't for COVID nineteen? I just started headlining like yeah. right at the beginning of COVID. I literally left Denver after one night. I know. I was supposed to do like two or three more nights. In, do you think back? Go. Oh, I wish I finished the weekend, or it doesn't matter at this point. No, at this point, I'm I'm glad that I came home. Because when I was there, I was gonna stay. I mean, I flew all the way there knowing that. It was kind of a weird time. Yeah, something's happening. But then when I got there, everyone was talking about the lockdown, and obviously I've never experienced an L.A. lockdown. So I'm like, does that mean I can't come home? So I was like, I need to get home now. Oh, you're worried that got it. You're worried that you might be stuck in Denver. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know anyone in Denver. I was doing the. Have you done the the seasonal improv in the desert in? Joshua Tree area. What's it called? Is it the one at the Ace Hotel? No, it's at it's at a casino. It's at the Indio. Oh, okay. Indio Improv. I was there. There's an improv. Seasonal improv at the Indio. Whoa. Yeah. So have you ever done the Lake Tahoe Improv? It's like no. that. So there's a few improvs that are just seasonal. Oh, Lake Tahoe seasonal. Uh huh. Lake Tahoe is at Harvey's Casino. And that's both those comedy clubs are just during the tourism season, so mm. winter and summer, I think. So, I was scheduled there. And Francisco Ramos was supposed to be headlining, and he canceled. And then they just shoved Grant Cotter in as a last-minute replacement. And he was freaking out the whole weekend about COVID. Grant was? Yeah, and I was just – and Francisco obviously freaked out to the point where he canceled. And then I was just calling him a pussy the whole weekend and living it up. There was like 10 people. It was all – but the audience that came were the best audience members because no one gave a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just did shows in Texas, and that was weird. Were they? Did people wear masks? Was what's it like there? They're not wearing masks. But are they supposed to be? Like, what's the? I don't know. What are the regulations there? I mean, when I got booked to do the gig, they're like, "Here are our COVID protocols in the email," you know. So it's right. like sanitizing everything, masks, unless they're eating or drinking. So they pretend like they're trying to do something. Yeah, and then it's you get normal. there, and everyone's like, "Nachos." <laughs> And then they have the nachos on the table the entire show and their mask is off. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I just, I get so, um, I mean, I had a great time. Yeah. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm like, what if I get sick and then I have to be like, oh, you know. I, if I was rich, if I was legitimately rich. I mean, you have $9,000 in your bank account. If I had, let's say, 900,000. Do you still have nine? How do you keep it consistently at nine? Because every time you make that joke, it's always nine. (laughs) I had to retire that joke. Trump's no longer the president, but uh, I have more than nine now. Mm. I have, I could say it. It's still not, it's still not enough to where I'm uncomfortable saying it, but I have like 19 now. So I've over doubled it. From this? No, just from life, stand up, this, uh, you do stand up? <laughs> Some, sometimes remember that time I opened for you in San Diego. Oh, that so was that awful. Added, that added to no, that I added thought it, it wasn't awful. To your pool. It wasn't awful. It wasn't. We spent amazing. it all in Tijuana right after. Yeah, you're my you're my junk food prostitute, buddy. Yeah, I never <laughs> thought I would have that title, but somehow here I am. It's a pr- you'd think it would be easy to say to someone, "Hey, do you want to go to Tijuana tonight?" And they'd go, yeah, that sounds fun. Even if they don't want to get a prostitute, just yeah. be like for the adventure. Yeah. But most people are too scared. How many people do you hit up? All my friends. Really? Abby won't go anymore. Why? Because he's a good boy? Because he, I guess so. I guess because he's a good, yeah, I guess because he's a good boy. But I'm like, you could go, like we went. We didn't get prostitutes. No, and it was so fun. Yeah, we had great was, tacos. Yeah, it was still fun to go. No, they were pretty bad too that night, I feel like. We had one, there was one good taco that we got, and the rest that we got were a yeah, little yeah. bit weird. But it, yeah, it's just a, to me, it's just a fun adventure to go to a third world country. <laughs> is, is Tijuana a third world? Mexico is a third world country. Is it? I, I would think so. But uh, I yeah. feel like there's beautiful, like wealthy totally. parts of Mexico. Oh, absolutely. And most third world countries have a wealthy world? part. Is it second world? Is there a second world? I don't know. I always went. I always just go straight to third. Yeah. 
but there's got to be a s- in between. You would think so. But yeah, even if you go to like a shitty country in Africa or Bali, these other third world countries, there's still nice parts of them. Mexico, yeah. you know, Mexico City is beautiful. There's Tulum. beautiful parts of Rosarita, Tulum. But overall, the country. Hmm. Not America. You go to Australia, America looks like a third world country. Really? Yeah. Or you go to Skid Row. Do you ever drive down there for fun? Oh, yeah. Skid Row, it feels like you're in another world. Yeah, definitely. There's just crackheads, tents everywhere. It's pretty wild. It place. is fucked up. Sometimes, yeah, every time I'm in that part of town for food or for whatever reason, I always drive through Skid Row just to soak it in. Yeah. Does that make me a good person? No. Do, are you giving them anything? No. You're just driving by. Yeah, just like a zoo. Just letting me letting me know what else is out there in the mm. world. Yeah, I don't think that makes you a good person. <laughs> I don't think it makes you a bad person. Okay, cool. You know what I did the other day and I was like, am I a bad person? There's this spot on Santa Monica Boulevard in like kind of like western and there's a lot of like um like small businesses there. So there's like a 7-Eleven, but then there's also like this family-owned corner store. Okay. You know? Uh-huh. And and I'm always so tempted to go in and buy something even though I don't need anything, but there's I you can't You want to support tell... the family-owned store. Yeah. And the family's not white. What are they? Mexican. You've seen that? Yeah. Okay. But you still haven't bought anything or you have? Uh, no, I did. What'd you get? Uh, there's a, a spot right next to the convenience store, and it's a juice spot. And it's like literally the lady in there does not speak English at all. Like, I have to so like. So you went point in the, the convenience shop and you bought juice? No, it's next door. Oh. Um, but every time I pass the convenience store, I'm always like, oh, I want to just like buy something. And I don't know if it's because there's something that's like really sweet about like a small ran store that's uh-huh. not like 7-Eleven or like whatever you right. know there's something that's really yeah, like yeah you want to support wholesome. a struggling business but then I'm like am I being like a colonizer is there like some weird part of my brain that's like or not colonizer it's the opposite where I'm like I need to su- like this white guilt thing where I'm like I have to support them like they're not gonna sur- I don't think that that's what it is but part of my brain even if like, that is what it is it still is, makes you good that you're supporting someone yeah I guess it does yeah even if it's I don't know what the word is. But even if you think that, like you're saying, what if they're not struggling at all? They don't need your help. Yeah. But you're just like, I need I mean, help based them. on the looks inside there, they're not doing amazing. Right. You know. Certain um, races of people, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say which races because then I'm a racist. I'm just going to say certain races of people I've noticed, they don't care about the aesthetic of their businesses. Even if their business is killing it, they're never going to get a deep clean or remodel. They're yeah. just going to kind of... I think because to a lot of, like, immigrants, it's not about the... Yeah, gl- they're like, this like, works. Yeah. Yeah. W- it's what like, do you why need would we spend for? our hard-earned money on, yeah, like, just waste. making it more beautiful yeah, when exactly. it works perfectly fine? Yeah. There's, like, a lot of, like, Russian spots by where I live, and their stores are always, like, so unorganized. Yeah, maybe it's not a race thing. Maybe it's an immigrant so. thing. Yeah. I think but I can it say it is it is a sexuality thing because gay people of any nationality will improve the look of their business if they have enough money. Depends on what you think good is. No, gay, not good. Yeah. Gays will imp- improve. It depends on what you think They'll good remodel. is. Because, like, I don't know if you... Did you ever watch Queer Eye? Uh, I've seen some episodes, yeah. Or, like, I forget what I was watching, but this one person was, like, redecorating their room because they wanted, like, an LGBT room. And it was the ugly, like, they. I think they had, like, an unlimited amount of money. Not mm-hmm. unlimited. But, but a high budget. They had a budget to design this, like, recreational room. And they made it look worse? It was so bad. Was it worse, though? Uh, or is it just, you're like, that's not what I would have done? Yeah, I guess just aesthetically I thought it was really unflattering. Here's a sexist thing that Abby and I discovered last week that I think you could say and you can't get canceled for. If you have a child and you were hiring someone to change the child's diaper, a stranger, you would hire a female every time. Yeah. I have a joke about that. You do? Yeah. Well, I talk about, kind of. I talk about how uh, before COVID I was babysitting 
I've always kind of been a babysitter. Right across the street from my house. Yeah. Yeah. And I was I was I met the I met the kid you were babysitting. So cute. And the dad, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I love them so much. And I the joke is pretty much just like all you have to do to become a babysitter is be a woman. <laughs> they won't check anything else. They're just like, Do you have a vagina? And they're like, Here's my kids and I'm like, Do you want me to use this? Like, why does that matter? Um, because women can also be fucked up and it ties into my joke totally. about Casey Anthony. Yeah, you're right. It's a sexist uh, business. But it is true. I think women just, I mean, obviously there can be like really messed up women because I've heard of a lot of guys have stories about female babysitters being like inappropriate with them. Yeah, but the difference is, I think, too, like getting raped by a woman isn't... Is violent, Less threatening, but still traumatizing. At least nothing's in getting put inside your body. That's not true. It says who? Oh, like they if could a use woman, objects. Yeah, they could. But chances are, if, if a let's say I was a a, uh, a child, and my female babysitter molested me, chances are she's gonna have me like she's gonna touch my penis, or she's gonna have me do stuff to her, which is isn't good. Not no. okay. But it'd be better than having a male babysitter rape my child butthole. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. At least to me. Yeah. In my mind. I'd rather have that. Yeah. I'd rather have Beatrice. That was my childhood mm. uh, nanny. I'd rather yeah. have Beatrice molest me. Well, I think, like, if I, when I have kids, I will probably hire a woman only because... Uh, I think women are just more nurturing inherently. Mm -hmm. That too. And it's almost like like when I'm babysitting, I'm pretending that that child is mine. Like I'm watching that child as though she is my child. Oh, that's nice. And I think like, I don't know. Yeah. I think guys just don't. I think there's guys that are like that, but less of them. You For have sure. to really know them. Well, and I talk about, sorry to keep talking about my comedy, but I'm just really crafting a lot of great stuff over the Quarantine. Are you? Do you have a lot of new material? No. Oh, me um, <laughs> But I think like like guys, when they have a kid, they still are guys. They're still bros. They're dudes. They still uh -huh. do dude shit. When women have children, they complete. They become a mother. They change. Here's a stereotype that will go against what you're saying, though. Okay, tell me. Because okay. I like being so, proved wrong. In every porno, but I think this is real, not just in porn. <laughs> When there's a babysitter. Are you citing porn? To... I'm citing porn, but it's based on reality, in my opinion. In every porn, what does the female babysitter do? Has their boyfriend come over while they're babysitting and fuck them? Yeah. So women are still irresponsible sluts. That's like teenage women. True. Teenage girls. Yeah, young girls. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a friend who was just telling me about that. He said that he had a babysitter who brought over her boyfriend and was like getting nasty with him. Yeah. It's really weird that that's like a thing. So, but maybe it's, but, but, may, you know what? And I'm going to prove you wrong now. Uh -huh. Maybe it's because when you're, say, me and you are a couple uh -huh. and we're married and we uh -huh. have a child. One day. One day we will. Uh -huh. That child's going to be sleeping in the other room and we're going to pound one out while the child is finally asleep. So I think still, it's still okay. in the back, of, it's not that it's okay because yeah. that's not your kid, that's not your house, that's right. inappropriate. But I think still in the back of their head, they're playing house. It's the girl being like, come over and she wants to play. Look it, I can take care of this kid and then like I can also please you. To bring it to my comedy, uh, I do a joke about how when I was a kid, my mom hired a babysitter that was the same age as me. Yeah, that's so funny. And there was another another thing that was weird is when my younger brothers needed to be babysitted, instead of hiring me as a babysitter, they would hire a babysitter that was the same age as me to babysit my younger brothers. And I remember, like, hitting on the babysitter that was my age. How did it work? Didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. You don't really have luck. With women? Yeah. I mean... I have some luck. Who's your favorite guest you've had on this podcast? Like favorite episode or favorite person that I was just excited to have? Just like super excited to have. Uh, Dave Rubin I had on during the quarantine. That was a big one. 
He is a conservative oh, yes. political talk show host. Yeah, that was recent. As. That, yeah, that was uh, right at the election, as the election was yeah. happening. So that was a good one. And then I had a woodworker. His name is uh, Ben from Woby Design. And he I watch all his videos of him making stuff out of wood. Oh, that's cool. So a few people like that. <laughs> yeah. Neither of them are popular episodes, but sure. I was excited about yeah. that. Yeah. I think that's more important. I'd rather have someone on that I'm really excited about than get views. The, yeah, there were people that I'm like, wow, that I'm, I was legit fans of. You know what I mean? Like they weren't my friend. They weren't like, oh, they're famous, but then they're coming on. There were people like, I watch all your videos. I'm stoked you're here. Yeah. Like that type of thing. That's super fun. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Um... I just had Michael Rappaport on, and I was a little bit nervous that I wouldn't... I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, am I going to have enough to talk about? Like, am I going to be able... Oh, I don't well, know. luckily for you, he could talk for days. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I kind of in the back of my head was like, I'm sure if I can't come up with anything, he he's going to... Yeah. And so that, it, I had a really good time having him on the podcast. And then, like, Cheeto Vera, the UFC fighter. Uh-huh. That one was really fun because he had just won his fight and I had seen him fight in person before. So I was like very fascinated by him and like his craft. So would you say you are fans of both these people or just excited that these successful people in their fields are coming on? Um, Fans. Fans. Yeah. Michael Rapport, I know there's some controversy around him. Definitely. He is funny and successful, but he, who did he throw under the bus? He threw one comedian under the bus. Really? I can't remember. But now I can't remember it, so I feel oh. just like a douchebag talking shit. But he he said they're he said they're at, he sent all his his fans on him. Oh, Ari Shafir. Oh, he threw Ari Shafir under the bus th- what, during the Kobe tweet. Oh. He like sent his fans to go get him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was another interesting thing was I wanted to get him on the podcast because I had met him not that long ago, like. St- 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 like two months ago, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'd only seen him. It shows that we were on together and my sisters love him because he's into the real housewives and my sisters love the real housewives. And, um, yeah, I kind of knew that there was like some controversy, but I don't know. But then I was like, ask questions for this episode and it was very mixed. Some people were like, that's so sick. Like, oh my God. And then there were some people who were like, fuck him. Is he going to just talk about shitting on Trump the whole time or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, But I think that's what makes it interesting is you kind of get to see more. I see it. Talking shit about a figure is so weird to me because like, hey, if you don't like Michael Rapport, just don't listen to the episode. For sure. Who cares? For sure. Who That's how I feel. Shit. And also talking shit about politicians or any public figure. I could talk shit about Ariana Grande. And it's like she's huge. Who cares that I'm like, oh, I don't like her makeup or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Who cares? She has millions of dollars. She has an extremely you loyal her. fan base. You'll actually yeah. only bring more people to her probably. Yeah, so it's like wh- I don't get why people get so worked up when someone's like, Trump shit pig dick or whatever or like biden sleepy who cares i had tom arnold on Uh he just talked about trump the whole time really and that was too much yeah it was like okay can we talk about roseanne for a minute here yeah let's stop talking about is it are we sorry i keep hitting ow i hit my phony bone (laughs) are we doing this podcast yeah unlicensed therapy so at some point so at some point but you used to do other ones not for me Oh. Uh-uh. Oh. I've done this one. I didn't start doing this one consistently mm. until maybe last year and a half. But I started on licensed therapy a while ago. Long time ago. Years yeah. ago. At some point, do you bring a question to me? Do people ask in questions? I like it to be organic, but yeah, if it doesn't come up, I say, I'll do it right now. I'll say Well, we don't have to. I no, can no. just keep talking. No, 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 I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. So, Allie, from my perspective, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. You're pretty. You have an amazing family that cares about you. You are a massive success in the comedy field, and your success will only continue to grow. You're making money. You're doing everything you want to do. Your dreams are coming true. So why are you here? What's wrong? On your podcast? What's going on with you? With a McRib? What keeps you awake at night? With no makeup on? 
with no makeup on. Are you um, wearing makeup now? No. Oh, yeah. I'm sense. all broken out. Yeah. You look great. Hey, I guess it's your good side then. No, because still, I'd rather have a couple zits, but have better facial structure on okay. one side. Um, you know, it's so funny when you're talking about comedy career or whatever. Mm-hmm. The comedy store just posted a clip of me on Kill Tony. Worst clip I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. Who's running that account? I think Emily. <laughs> yeah. She was like, can you send me a clip of you on Kill Tony? I'm like, I did so I can't remember a Uh specific clip that stands out. Right. So I'm like, oh, just put on the episode where it's Russell Peters and Joe Rogan as the guest. Okay. Because I'm like, I'm sure I had a good minute for those big guests. And you didn't? At the time, I thought it was good. Oh, but you watch it now and you cringe? Yeah, once she posted it, I was like, ugh. I mean, like, you're not going to like any of those minutes because it was your first time trying all those minutes. So bad. You're not. She would, couldn't have picked an episode oh, where you're yeah. like, yeah, that was my first time doing that, and I nailed it. Killer it was, minute. Yeah, it was awful. It's never going to happen. And then the comments below it are just blasting me. But oh, it's really? all very, I'm like, yeah, I agree with all of these comments. Okay, even if you agree with them, though, who leaves? I know. It makes me so sad how much negativity there is on the internet. But it's so funny because when I was watching the clip, I almost forgot that I was watching myself and I wanted to leave a comment being like, oof. You're just saying that. No, I swear. I swear. There was a moment where I almost started typing and then I was like, oh, this is my own video. Yeah. I'm sure on this vid- very video, someone's going to be like, came here for Ali. Ari sucks or vice versa or yeah. whatever. It's like. Shut up. The only Just, mean comments I like are funny. When so, like when I did Rogan, there were so many uh, funny comments. Yeah, if it's like a roast. They're like, or... this girl sounds like she's on the brink of crying <laughs> at all times. Yeah. Or like, this girl sounds like she snowboards. Yeah, when it's a joke. Funny like, stuff like that, yeah, I love totally. it. Totally. Totally, but when it's just like, Ari sucks, I couldn't get through the episode. Okay. Then turn then, it off. Yeah. Don't say anything. Then why'd you try well, and get through the episode? Yeah. Thanks for ge- watching and giving yeah. me money. I don't you know. You stayed long enough to leave a comment. I think it's because I think it's because they're jealous. Not of like I'm jealous of Ari, but I'm jealous that I'm in my mom's basement and work a shitty job, and these are comedians doing what I wish I could be doing. Yeah. But I don't like that we always say they're in their mom's basements because they're probably just in bed. Okay, they're upstairs at their studio in, apartment. In, I think most people, I would like to know the percentage of people who are internet trolls that live with their parents. Yeah. I bet it's pretty high. Because a lot of them are kids. That's the thing. A lot of people who leave negative comments are children. And then if you're an adult that has a good job, you're not leaving comments. But then on the other end of that, I hate people who are overly supportive for no reason. Leaving extremely positive comments. (laughs) But I'd still prefer that. Over negative. I think it's so lame. Like, blow, Like I, I'm on TikTok a lot, and uh-huh. I'm watching a lot of these TikToks. And it'll be someone doing something mediocre, but they'll have, like, no hand. And people in the comments are like, this is the most genius <laughs> video I've ever seen. Right. You're so beautiful. Drop your makeup routine. Like, just blowing. And I, I, don't, I get it. I'm like, oh, that's great. It's probably someone who doesn't typically experience uh, extreme positivity in that way. But at the same time, it's like... Can we just be generally nice? Why don't you just react the way you actually feel? Yeah. Is what you're saying. Be real. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about this the other day. My aunt is an incredibly kind person, but she's in her 60s. And if you say like the F word around her, if you say fuck, she'll like wince and make a face like she's holier than the F word. I'm like, grow up. You know what the you know what the word fuck is. Yeah. Why are you pretending like you're better than the word fuck? Just be an adult. I don't. That doesn't sound like she thinks she's better. It just sounds like she's phony. just like just, so just kind of phony to me. Yeah. When someone gets upset or like you tell someone that you didn't wear a condom, <gasps> and they're I like, "I hate that." You're you didn't wear a condom. You're you're gross. Oh my, God, my sisters used to always say that to me. They're like. You're not wearing condoms. Like, I can't believe that. Like, that's so gross. You have to be careful. And, the, yeah, it's, uh, it do, yeah, I get what you mean. It does feel very, like, I'm better than you. And then I'm like, bitch, you're not wearing condoms 100%. That's what I'm saying. No one's wearing condoms. No one wears condoms. You know how I know no one wears condoms? Because no one's ever asked me to put a condom on, or maybe once. Yeah. There was, a, I normally don't use condoms. 
And I'm not saying that's good. For sure. It's very much healthier and safer, safer to use to a, condom. a condom. Same with the mask and the vaccine, whatever. But there was one guy not super long ago who I was hooking up with, and I knew he was hooking up with a lot of other people. And I was so like, you knew he was kind of a slut. Yeah. So I'm like, we're wearing condoms. Yeah. I'm not risking it. Oh, with you. yeah. If I know a girl isn't safe and I'm actually concerned or if I see something down there, let's say. See, but God. I'm not even doing it. Yeah, I had a guy once who asked if he needed to get tested the next day because he thought that I had herpes or something, but I just I had, had a lot of ingrown hair. hairs, yeah. See, if I have a big ingrown hair down there, probably just, hey, let's take it slow. Mm. Being the good guy, nice you guy know? yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm not ready to have sex until the third date. Hey, I have a question. Uh -huh. Speaking of unlicensed therapy. Yeah. So I'm starting to see someone. How many dates? We I've been sleeping over a lot. But five we've been times, hanging ten out times, for, We've been hanging weeks. out for a month. We made okay. food the other night together. One month hanging out a lot. Got it. Yeah. And last night was the first night I spent the night without hooking up. And what, why do you think you didn't hook up? Well, I know exactly why. Because okay. I, I got a UTI at his house the night before. So I was like in excruciating pain. Got I it. was peeing constantly throughout the night. Okay. And so I think he was just being nice and not like pressuring me to sure. hook up because he knew I was yeah. in pain. Um, but sometimes I want to just hang out and not have sex and and i think guys are very like horny driven where, where they'll have sex at any moment and so i don't know how to set that boundary of like i really like you i just don't want this relationship to be based around hooking up every time i come over or is that something that just like happens in the beginning of a you know dating relationship for sure happens for sure sex is more exciting in the beginning mm -hmm. and it shows that he's into you and the fact that you were able to spend the night and he didn't pressure you, I think shows that he does like you and is not just using you for sex. Yeah. So if that's so is is the reason you want to go over and not have sex because you want to prove to yourself that that's the relationship isn't just for sex or is it because sometimes you just don't want to have sex? Yeah, sometimes I'm just like not in the mood. And so then I'm having sex where I'm like completely in a different Headspace, and I'm just kind of like putting up with it because that's where you're kind of in this territory of, you know, different, not just men and women, but different people have different levels of horniness. Yeah. Some women like to have sex three times a night. Some women, women like to have sex once a week. Some men, you know, and vice versa. So you're at a different level of sex drive than this guy. Well, but that's like. the crazy thing is that when we first started hooking up, um, this isn't like me, but the first few times we um, started hooking up and I was spending the night at his place, I would hook up with him like three times in a yeah. night. And that's yeah. like normally not like I have a pretty low sex drive. Right. But like the first maybe four times I spent the night, it was like like that. And so now I'm worried that I've set up this idea that I'm like this horny nymphomaniac. Right. But maybe I kind of have. told him, I was like, don't this get too excited like because this really isn't like Got me. It. And I was like, and soon enough, I don't know when, there's going to be a point where I'm not. So, in my opinion, there's going to be, I don't want to get dip into this, like, controversial area too much. But I think there's two things here. The first is that communication. Of course, speak, you know, if this is how you're feeling, say, hey, sometime, you know, my sex drive, I know. It's not because I don't like you. I just, I do like you. And I would like to see you and not have sex every time. You could say that. Yeah. But secondly, even though you might not be in the mood, I think it's perfectly okay to have sex with someone and for be them. And different, yeah. Because, uh, and, and I'm this getting into an area where people are like, that's not true, you shouldn't have sex. Unless you really want to have sex with a guy, you shouldn't have sex with a guy. I've had sex with girls when I'm not in the mood. Yeah. Because I wanted to perform and pleasure her or whatever because I, I'm a nice guy and I want to make her happy. So I think girls can do that too. For so. sure. Well, and it's similar, like, yeah. I, you know, I completely get what you're saying, or it's like, you know, there's other things that I do for guys and other things that guys do for me where it's like, they don't really want to do that, but they're uh -huh. doing it to be nice and yeah. courteous. And because they like you, yeah. And because they like you. So, yeah, I see what you mean. But I, I was, I 
kind of was seeing this like sex coach during COVID. We would have like FaceTime calls and um one of the things that she was saying Wait, rewind sex for coach, a second. They don't, yeah, what's yeah. a sex coach? Why are you seeing a sex coach? So it's not a sex therapist. They don't right. go back and figure out like all these weird sexual experiences you've had. It's more so like what are your goals in terms of sex and relationships? And my goal was So it's kind of just a relationship counseling. In yeah. A way. Is it is it SA or no? Is it like sex love anonymous? No, or no, 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 no. It's just like goal oriented relationship okay, advice. Okay. And how did you even So my friend is friends with this lady. Got it. And she's like, you should talk to this person. Yeah. And you're like, all right. And then she's like, I'll just talk to you for free and we can figure it out. Okay. So I was like, a free sex coach, sure, why not? Uh-huh. Because my issue is I have a hard time having orgasms. Yes. And so we were trying to get to the root of the problem. N- no, because that's oh. what a sex therapist would do. Got it. We're not getting to the root. We're trying to find ways for me to be more present and like, you, you know, like um, kind of like homework assignments to do to be more present and feel myself and be comfortable and right. whatever. But she was like, I want you to make a list of the things that you look for in a partner. Wealthy, successful, motivated, you know, whatever it is, good looking, Uh smart, whatever. All those things. I want all those things. I want everything. And so I made my list. We narrowed it down. And I forgot to put loyalty on the list. She was (laughs) like, you might want to add that. Um, So I put that on the list. That's a given. Some of these things are givens, right? Yeah, I guess. You got to be attracted to the person. So cute's a given and loyalty's a given. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Continue. So I just, like, didn't even think about that, so I add that to the list. And then she was like, oh, and one more thing that's super important is sex drive compatibility. It is. I agree. It's important. Yeah. She was like, you don't need to use this list if you're just, like, trying to have a one-off hookup with someone. But she's like, if you're going on a date, you want to make sure that this person checks off a couple of the top things on this list and also the sex drive compatibility. I agree. Because you don't want to be with someone who's horny all the time if you're a not horny person or vice versa or whatever. Or if you like using a lot of tongue and you're with a girl that just gives you smooches and doesn't like to kiss with tongue, even that. Yeah. Are you a smoocher or a make-outer? No, I'm a make-outer. But do you do a little smoochy after? Sure. I'm okay with smooches. But I'm saying one time I was with this girl and she's like, yeah, I just don't like to use tongue when I kiss. I'm like, oh, we're that's not going to work. One time I made, I went on a date with this guy who is on the spectrum <laughs> and he kissed like this. And that's okay. That's okay. But I need but other I kinds too. I can't feel like I'm kissing a bird at Rainforest Cafe. I kiss like a bird after, like when they're just laying yeah. there and I'm laying next to her. I just, I'll just kiss her like a bird. Do you do forehead kisses with yeah. one night stands? Oh, with one night stands. If she's like, you know, if it's really passionate, I'm really into her. Yeah. Maybe. You know, she's a beautiful Because on TikTok, girls get so upset that guys kiss them on the forehead <laughs> when they're not serious. That's what she'll say? On TikTok, people get really mad about that. But what if um, I want to get serious with a person, but we're not serious yet? Is yeah. it then okay to yeah. do forehead kisses? If you have the intention of being serious with this person, forehead kisses are okay. I don't really see anyone unless... I have some intention of seeing them again. I don't really do one night stands, to be honest. I've had a couple, and sure, I've had girls I've hooked up with that I'm not that into. But overall, you're I'm, trying to hook up I with want people a girlfriend. that you, yeah, yeah. I want. A, I'm a relationship guy, for yeah. sure. But you haven't really been in that many relationships. I've been in five, but not long term. They've all been the shortest relationship I've ever had is six months, and the long I've had two two year relationships. Oh, okay. One one year relationship. Have I known you in a long relationship? I think you know me one with one. Do I know this person? She was half Asian. She ended up going crazy on me. <gasps> yes. So she we lived together. That was yeah, pretty I serious. didn't like her. <laughs> I don't think any did anyone like her? Most people didn't know her, but she definitely at the end yeah, it did got enough weird. things to where yeah. yeah, there's no way anybody could like her. Yeah. But I feel like you need a girl outside of LA. Yeah, but I don't want to do a long distance relationship. Yeah. But maybe once I finish my van, yeah. I could be move around a lot. Yeah. What about you? Are you looking for a relationship? You are. I don't know. See, that's the thing that also... Okay, here's another little unlicensed therapy. Uh-huh. I get really... 
I get really invested in the beginning, and I'm like, I can see myself with this person. That's everyone. And they're yeah. great, and I'm having sex all the time with them, and it's so fun. It loses its luster. Yeah, and then I get to That's a point normal. where I'm like, that's very, very normal. But then I get scared, so then I, like, break it off with the person before it gets serious because there's something that's because scary you... about routine or, like, knowing that... Or you're scared that once it's serious, it's going to be even harder to break it. Like, yeah. Like, I should break this now so I don't have to break it later. I think there's always this idea in my head that nothing's going to be forever. And so I'm like, well, why would I... Why would I why would I only let one man inside of me for more than a certain amount of time if it's not going to work out? But I think that's... Well, you got to wait for it to not work out. I know. And I think I just, in my head, already play it all out before it happens. I never just give Do myself the experience. you find, like, one flaw of the person yeah. and then be like, yeah, it's just uh -huh. that one flaw is not yep. going to work? Yeah. I, I wonder if that's, like, an abandonment issue... I don't know. I think it's just because it's like me. You know abandoning what? I think them. if you like them enough, you wouldn't do it. I think, I think the breakups are probably for a good reason. Because if you really liked a person, you're not gonna want to stop seeing them. Yeah, you won't be able to. You're gonna miss them. You're gonna be like, oh, I would love to see that guy again. But I had already ended things. You would be like, no, I miss him. I want to see him. See, but then with my ex, Aaron, you know, Aaron. Uh huh. How long did you guys date for? We were together for like three months, but okay. it was very like. Heavy from the beginning, you know. It was. Yeah, yeah. he like my my family. I, li I like Aaron. I love Aaron. Yeah. Love Aaron. And so with him, it's like when when I broke up with him, I knew I needed to break in my. I felt I needed to break up with him uh -huh. because fear. I just there's something just changed in my brain where I'm like yeah. I'm not supposed to be with this person. Okay. I can't be with them. Uh huh. I don't know what it is. Like, I can't even think about what it was. It was like, right. you just know. he talks annoying or something. <laughs> you know, it's like anything. Could right. Be. You found a flaw because no one's perfect. He wears a weird shirt yeah, that yeah. I don't like. And so I don't want to marry this person. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've been together for three months, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then he was in Texas when I was in Texas. And then there's like part of me that's like, oh, did I make a mistake? But then I'm like... I, it's more so that he's not with me and I'm not with him. And I imagine that if, if we did get back together. You'd find another. In a month, I'd be like. Ugh. I've I've played that game. I know. I've broken up with girls and then missed them because I forgot why I broke up with them. Yeah. And then we start hooking up again. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's. Aaron's the nah. best, though. Like, I'm so glad that I'm friends with him. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Are you, are there any exes that you just blocked each other and. My Around. very first. I've only had, like, boyfriends twice. Aaron and this first one? Yeah. So you've had two boyfriends? I've had two boyfriends. Oh, you got to get another boyfriend. I know. You're 24? 25. 25? Oh, yeah, you're old enough to have three or four boyfriends by now. But does a three-month boyfriend even count as a boyfriend? I think, to me, what counts as a boyfriend is if you say you're my... You're my boyfriend. When you introduce him to someone, this is but my boyfriend. But he became my boyfriend after four dates. Doesn't matter. If if you introduce him <laughs> to someone. That's psycho. Uh, it's a little fast. And then he told me he loves me three months later. Three months two isn't months, crazy. Two months. Two months. Two months isn't crazy to say I love you to someone if you're with them a lot and you feel it, I think. Yeah. But it's like even if you feel it, just hold out a little bit. It's scary. Because he probably did hold he, out. He probably felt it after one month and held out for two months. But as soon as he said, I love you. Did you say back? No. Yes. Wait, wait. Yes or no? I said yes. Oh. I said I love you too. Did you feel it back or did you just say it back because you didn't want it to be weird? I, th I think I felt like I loved him the same way that I love you. I so lo you loved him you just weren't in love with him is what you're saying? Yes. And so as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, I start calling my sisters. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So. I need guys to play it extremely cool around me. Keep me guessing. There's always, yeah, there's always that balance. And as soon as you let the person know, and I've, and even though I'm aware of it, it's the game. Yeah. But even though I'm aware it exists and it, and it exists on both sides, you still, I, I have a really hard time of controlling myself. And when I do really like a girl, it's really hard for me to play it cool. So, but I think it I can also it, be but. easy to mix the feelings of lust and you know, yeah. the sexy part of it with actual love. Right. 
I it love is. spending time with you. I love hooking up with you. I love making food with you. I'm not necessarily in love with you yet, but I love. I think I could love you one day. Yeah. But you don't say that. That's just no, a weird thing. That's a, yeah, summer. it's almost rude. <laughs> I think one day. <laughs> one love. day I could potentially be in love. I don't know. I love so, your pussy. Yeah. I, I'll say that to a girl day, night one. I've I heard that, that the inside of your mouth, someone, I saw this on TikTok. Girls were like, I wonder what it would be like to, like, what a vagina feels like for a guy. And then they said that it feels like the inside of your cheek. Yeah, I think that's true. You don't I felt the inside of my cheek before. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that feels like a vagina. Interesting. It's good, huh? Good stuff. I've <laughs> I've been down. I there. mean, you felt the inside of vagina too, for sure. Several. Yeah, but it's different with like a dick than a finger or a mouth or something. A little. <sighs> Eating puss is difficult. Eating puss is um for me, it depends on the person you're talking to. Because you hear a lot of girls going, I just don't think I could eat a girl out. Like a lot of girls who are like, oh, I'd make out with a girl and suck her boobs, but I don't want to eat a girl out. Yeah. I've heard that a lot from women. Uh-huh. It, what they don't, what I've come to, so my first girlfriend, I didn't like eating her out. And then I thought, oh, I don't like eating girls out. They're, it's gross. It's just, you got to find the right. With. Yeah. It's, you just, there's good vaginas and there's bad vaginas. Yeah. Same thing. Probably same thing with penises, I would imagine. You probably there's probably been penises you like sucking more than others. No, they're all the same. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, pretty much. For me, I'm just selective. But maybe I'm gay and I don't know it. You'd know it. Yeah. You would know it because, yeah, you would know. You'd be yeah. nervous around girls and. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So is that your biggest issues in your life? Is just orgasming and finding a yeah. healthy relationship? Yeah. Good problem to have. Yes. You got plenty of time to figure that out. You'll probably be married by, I think you'll be married by 33. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Because you're going to get to the point where you kind of like. I'm hoping that I get successful and I yes. start to. That you're going to be, you're going to be successful. My pool of men. Oh yeah. Your pool will expand, but also you'll be bored because you'll be like, well, I conquered comedy. So now the only thing left is kind of. Finding love. I don't think I'll feel like I conquered comedy. I bet you Whitney Cummings feels like she's conquered comedy. I bet you comedy is not boring. I think when you do something like this with your hair, the way that me and Whitney have, you there's things left undone. Sure. Not that you're, you've conquered being a person, but I bet you... You know, stand up doesn't. She doesn't have that same drive for selling a TV show or headlining a club. You know, yeah, it's kind of like you've done it. Yeah, you 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 know what it feels like to do the coolest thing. Yeah, you don't have that. Like I need to do this. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have that. Yeah. And then you're gonna love. Yeah. But do you think? Yeah. Okay. Maybe just a theory. Who do you see me with? What type of guy? Really nice. Really chill, chill, nice, probably grew weed in college, but now has since moved on to more adult-like activities, but definitely was a stoner at some point. Sober. Probably You'll, you'll probably meet him in the program. I'm not what allowed kind to talk of about like, that. No, that's fine. Yeah. What kind of career path do you think they'll be on? Like, what type of job? Not necessarily, like, a specific job, but, like, do you think that they're, like, a like professional? Another, do you think that they're going to be a comedian or not? Is that what you're asking? No. Like, yeah. do you think that they're going to be a creative, whether it's, like, art, music, comedy? Well, do you think that they're going to be an employer of someone? They're going to be in L.A. because I don't see you really moving out of L.A. Yeah. Maybe New York for the right opportunity, but so L.A. or New York. And they're going to, so they're going to be in the field of entertainment. But they're not going to be necessarily a performer. Yeah. But yeah. Do you want to see the guy that I'm talking to right now? Yeah. Is he hot? Does he have a six pack? No. I'm not into like muscle. I want to get a six pack. But I eat McRibs. I know. I've had three McRibs. Um, hold on. Oh, so cute. Can I put his picture up on the podcast? No. I knew you were going to say that. 
Wait, that's hold on. Can I put up a fake picture of a different person and say it's that person? Yeah, only if it's like a really funny. <laughs> Aw, he's sweet. He kind of uh he kind of looks like he has he he has a 70s look to him. Mhm. Mm uh kind of a van pedophile type of look a little bit, and then he also kind of looks like Aaron. He not really. They both Just have mustaches, mustache. glasses. Yeah. Skinny, white guys. Yeah. But he looks nice. How'd you meet him? Tinder. 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 And what's he do? I don't want to say. Why? Well, because like I That'll don't know. Tell everyone who it is. Well, no, I don't think that he would listen to oh, this. Oh, in case he's listening. But I've noticed, like, I've talked about people on the podcast who I didn't think would listen, and, they, and they then listen? of course they listen. And it's like right. this weird thing. Right, right, right. So, but even if he's listening right now, he knows we are. You might as well say what he does because he already knows you're talking about him. Yeah. He, um, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, he is an app developer. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Smart. Mm -hmm. Men in STEM. Apple? No. App developer? Android he, app he developer? Did, no, he does freelance. And yeah, he also but, has his own app that he's working but on. But does, does he do the coding? Yeah. So does he code? For, is it an Apple apps or Android apps or both? Probably both. Sick. Yeah. Good per, good person to know too. Yeah. You're going to for sure come up with an app at some point in your life. <laughs> now you, now you have the guy. He has this great, I have to tell you after, great idea for an app. But he hasn't done it yet? Or he's so, working on it? So it had investors mm -hmm. and the app kind of revolves around like, live events and like oh, large cool. events and so when covid happened it kind of got like shut down temporarily uh, but it's happened. starting to pick up i was i was about to be a movie star and then covid <laughs> happened <laughs> no but he legitimately had like big investors i was legitimately gonna star in a warner brothers film i was gonna be a a-list movie star if it wasn't for covid was it that aud audition where you no were i didn't get that one that was a cool one though. that was a cool one did I tell you what happened with that? No. So I had the biggest audition of my life. Yeah, I remember. It was like to star alongside James. It's that new ne movie just came out. It's on Netflix. It's called, I forget, but James, uh, no, not James. Seth Rogen's in it. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Sasha Baron Cohen. It was like star-studded cast, and I was auditioning to lead alongside them. Yeah. Never thought I was going to get it or anything, but I'm like, why are they auditioning for me this? And how do I don't even have a theatrical agent. So how is this happening? What's going on? I was so dumbfounded. I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to do it. So I learned the lines. I go in. I'm nervous. I do the audition. She gives me a note. I do it. She says, good adjustment. Good job. And she goes, do you have any questions? And I said, uh, I go, no, I don't think I have. I go, actually, uh, how did I get this audition? I just straight up asked her in the room. I'm like, I don't think uh, my, I said my, I'm not going to be insulting, but I said my agent's name. I'm like, I know he didn't get me this audition. And she laughed and she goes, I saw you do stand up at the Laugh Factory. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's so cool. And I left feeling like, wow, okay. You hear those stories of like doing stand up gets you an opportunity. Yeah. But I was like, it's never happened before. So I was like, wow, I guess stand up really can lead to something crazy. Yeah. So I left from feeling cool. And then, this assistant I knew at CAA texted me and go, how'd the audition go? So she lied. She said oh, that because she didn't want to out the assistant. She never saw me do stand-up. Uh, Some assistant at CAA got me the audition. Uh, yeah. I guess I not just that had good an of a audition. story. <laughs> no, it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I got a name. Hmm. Biggest audition. Anyway, what you just had an audition. Yeah, I just had to do a self-tape for paranormal. I don't know if I can talk about it. It's just a, it's a big audition. Don't, do I don't know if it's big, but it was like audition. it was the type of audition where I'm like, do they really want me to do this? Not because it's so big, but because it's like, mm, okay, I would take it though for sure. I would love to do money. Acting's easy. I hate the comedians are like not I wouldn't do it. Not even for the money. I just think it would be so cool to be able to like be on a set and like memorize uh -huh. lines like. The whole experience. Tell everyone to watch it. Yeah, like, yeah. and then get to see yourself and see how it came out. I think it would be so fun. Yeah, it'd be rad. Be a cool job. How could anyone complain about that yeah. job? 
to go memorize lines. And then, like, people do your makeup, do your hair. You get to, like, transform. Yeah, they kiss your ass while you're on set. Yeah. That's a wrap on Allie, everybody. Like, that whole thing. And then everyone applauds for you, and you're like, huh? My house just got filmed for NCIS, and I'm like, this is so cool. Really? Yeah. They use your house as a location? Yeah. How'd that happen? I was in my driveway, like, doing chalk painting with my friend, and this guy walked by. He was like, hey, we're scouting your neighborhood. We're looking for a house to film at. Like, would you be interested in letting us film at your house? Like, just like, the exterior yeah. shot. And I was like, yeah. Do they pay you? Yeah. How much? Um, so it's complicated because I have my house. You have house, a landlord. I have a landlord, and then there's a back house. So they were like, we can give you $2,000, which if it was just me, that would be yeah, great. Yeah, it's a nice chunk, but you had to split but it But I have that. to split it between my house and the back house, and I have three other roommates. So now it's $200, $250 uh, a person. Got it. So it's still cool. But then I was the site rep, so all my roommates had to be out of the house because of COVID. And so I was the one who stayed in the house when they were filming to make sure, like, everything was So you was got a little fine. extra. So then I got a little extra. Then my roommates were upset that they had to be out of the house. They were like, ask for more money. So then I asked them for more money. So then we ended up all getting extra on top. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's cool. And then I just got to watch LL Cool J knock on my door all day. Did you get to meet him? Said, no. That'd be pretty sweet. I didn't even realize it was LL Cool J. I forgot that they were filming at my house, and I was FaceTiming my sister in my room, and I heard this pounding at my door, and I was like, oh, my God. So I, like, run out to the living room, and all of a sudden, I'm making eye contact with LL Cool J, and he's, like, in character, you know? It's not like he's knocking on the door, the he's camera's behind angry, him, and he's just like, man. do, do, do. He's just, like, staring, and so I'm, like, staring at him, realizing that this is being filmed, and I just, like, duck down. And he didn't smile and go, sorry. No, he was like fully in character, just like, oh, I'll soon. And then I was like. <laughs> That's a pretty cool experience. It was pretty cool. Yeah, one time I got to be on set with uh, Busta Rhymes, and I thought Whoa. that was pretty cool. When I was little and I was on the radio, I got to interview Busta Rhymes. Really? And I asked what him if ask he could him? do, yeah. could you do Sally Sells Seashells by the Seashore? <laughs> and what, did he do it? Yeah, of course he did. That's or so no, cool. I'm sorry. I fucked that up. It wasn't Busta Rhymes? It was Twista. Still cool. Still cool. Similar, but different. I don't know. Twi- I've heard of Twista. Twista's but I don't the guy have who sings super head. fast. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know. How'd you get that interview? So, when I was on the radio, I was working uh-huh. for Ryan Seacrest. And then Ryan Seacrest back in the day, like 2004, had on air with Ryan Seacrest, and they were trying to make it into like a kind of like a talk show where he'd like interview musicians and celebrities, whatever. And so because I was working on his radio show, they wanted to have me do like segments on his TV show. Whoa. So they like recorded a bunch of episodes that just like never ended up. That's so cool though. Happening. I know. Wait, how old were you? I was like seven or eight. Wait, how are you working on the show at 7 or 8? You don't know the story? Ah. Uh. I started talking about it kind of a lot now. I feel like I talk about it too much. I've never heard it. So when I was in third grade, I was like 6 or 7, and my older sisters were getting ready for school. We're all listening to Kiss FM, getting ready. And I was like, I want to call in. I want to like hear my voice on the radio. I want to say something. Like, Give me the phone number to call in. And my oldest sister is like, no, like you're going to embarrass me. I'm not giving you the phone number. And I'm like, please. And so she's like, no, but I'm going to try calling in. So she calls in. Nothing happens. You know, it's like beep, beep, beep. She, my dad takes her to school. I hit redial on the phone and I immediately get through. And now I'm like, I don't know what to say. So I asked my other sister who's home. I'm like, what do I say? She's like, ask for Britney Spears tickets. So I'm like, hi, Ryan. Can I get Britney Spears tickets? And he's like, can you sing a Britney Spears song for us? And I'm like, okay. So I sing Toxic by Britney Spears Uh, at like six or seven years old, being like, the taste of your lips, I'm on a ride. Do you have a good singing voice back then too? I don't know. It was probably like, Good, good for but a childish, where yeah. you're like, nah, 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 like yeah. Alvin and the Chipmunk style. Yeah. Do you and take singing lessons? No. No, okay. I've just been gifted. Gifted by God. Okay. I remember asking my sisters one time, we were driving in the car, singing along to a song, and I'm like, guys, sing it for real. Like, try singing it. And they're like, we are. And I'm like, what, what do you mean you're trying to sing? Like, you sound bad. So you just had better voices yeah. than them from the beginning. Yeah. So I sing Toxic, and Ryan's like, oh, we don't have Britney Spears tickets, but we have American Idol tickets. And I'm like, I'll only go if they're VIP. 
You said that? Yeah, I was like, you know, my parents got divorced when and, I was five. But was, no one was telling you to say that? No. You just said that? Yes. And he's like, haha, okay. Yeah, and then we had this conversation back and forth. He's like, where are your parents? And I'm like, I don't know. It's seven in the morning, you know? And I'm just like <laughs> talking Oh, so you're a funny kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're just talking, and then um, I go to American Idol. He's like, call me back after American Idol. So I... The next morning after American Idol, I call and I'm like, I was sitting pretty far in the back. And, you know, I don't remember the details of the phone call. But, but it was funny. Once again, I'm going back. This and is why you're a comedian, him. I think, from this exact moment. I think so, too. Yeah. Genuinely. It, yeah, me too. It's like your taste. It's like your little taste of Hollywood. And you're like, more. Yes. Yeah. And it was also the first time I realized that. Are you, you making people laugh? And you could, that. like, entertain as a living. Yeah. So after my second conversation with him on air, he was like, stay on the line. Our producer wants to talk to you. So then the producer's like, where are your parents? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, here's my phone number. Have your dad call me when he gets home. So I'm like, Dad, Ryan Seacrest wants to talk to you. They had this idea for me to make prank phone calls. They're like, come up to Hollywood. We'll record a couple episodes, see if it works. If it does, great. If not, you oh, know, uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So we record the episodes. Huge hit. People love it. So then I started going in every single week. I'd leave school early on like a Are Tuesday. Are they paying? Yeah. At first they weren't. And then they were like, oh, this is illegal. Yeah. Um, so I would leave school early on like a Tuesday. And I'd like say later to my class. And everyone would be like, Ellie's going to Hollywood to record. Wow. Know? Oh, you were one of those LA kids. Well, I was in like that's kinda, that's LA Orange adjacent. County. but Long Beach. Right? I grew up in my school was in Orange County. Got it. Okay. But it was like one of those things where LA was still like cool, even though yeah. it was so close. It right, was like, right, Ooh. right. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then I would have someone from Kiss FM pick me up from school in like a Kiss FM decked out car. Oh, cool. Like in a sign so that really had cool. Ryan's face everywhere and like the black eyed peas on one side and fur, you know, yeah. like. And so I'd get picked up and I would pre record four episodes. And then on. Oh, that's like a lot of work. Yeah, but, you know, the producer was in the room, and he was, like, telling me who we were calling, what the point of the call was, and, like, where we were trying to take it and stuff. So it was, like, work, but not not to me. It was fun. It was better than school. It was fun, but it was, but, I mean, four episodes, that's, like. Four phone calls. Oh, got it. Okay. You know? Still. Yeah. Okay, but so you're doing it. So I would do that, and then people would call into the radio station. They would vote on their favorite call from the week, and that call would play on Fridays. And so I did that for, like, four years. Four years? Yeah, so from third grade until, like, sixth grade. Did your parents just put that into a savings account? Yeah. Do you Have you already used it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How much money was it? <laughs> Is this Jewish of me to want to know this? It was a lot of money. 50000 10000 20000 100000 100000 What did you blow it on? I got a car when I was 16. Nothing fancy, but it was just like, I mean, you're good sp- money. And then, and then you were like trying to make it. And then the funny thing is, you became a comedian and probably have yet to make that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> like yeah, you made yeah, more yeah. money without as even chi- trying yeah. as a child calling into a radio station. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I now re- you're chasing that. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it made me realize like 100000 is a lot of money. But when you're a teenager, oh, you could still go through 100000 easy. You quick. buy You buy a brand new car. It Depending wasn't on brand the car. new. It was no, no, but I'm just saying, if you have a hundred grand you, and you buy a new Ford Bronco, thirty gone instantly. Yeah, yeah. it goes very quickly. Yeah, you, I wasn't uh, responsible, but honestly, like your parents just let you have it, and was like, yeah, have fun. Yeah, you earned it. Yeah. See, my parents would never let me do no, that. No, and I think that they tried to. At first, it was like, okay, you can get a used car with your money. And then they would be like, you can get this with your money. And then once I was 18 and I was in college, I'm like, I want to go to Coachella. I want to get new clothes. I want to get a piercing. I want to get my hair done. Right. Which I still do. Yeah. I just don't have the funds to support it, but I (laughs) still live that lifestyle. Right. You just ran with it. Yeah. Did Now, were you not allowed to really have your way with it till you were 18? So... Was it a, did you have this feeling when you were a kid knowing that you had all this money in an account that you weren't touching? No, I never really thought about you it. You didn't think about it. Okay. No. I just knew, like, once I was in high school and I wanted to start getting things, I never really needed, like, I wasn't like, right, most things I are provided. To get stuff. Yeah. But once I was, like, becoming an adult, I was like, it's so adult to spend money. Yeah. So I just started spending money. 
I don't like money, but it's still is fun to fantasize about what you would do if you it's had it. It's just nice having the freedom. Like yeah. if you want something, oh, I'll go to Rome sure. next week. Yeah, I went. I went on a lot of trips. Like. I remember I still had some money saved. So, like, my first year into comedy, I really wanted to go to London. I wanted to oh, live there. Oh, I remember. There. So, like, the— Oh, wait, no. That was not your first year into comedy. When no. You so I was, like, able to go to London, and then I think that was the last time I had money because I remember I kind of, like, spent a lot of it out there. And then you're like, oh, now I'm poor. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't even realize, that, like, the um, money conversion. I remember oh, so you I, spent I was— double what you thought you did? I was staying at a hostel for, like— the a portion of the trip and on the last night I was there the hostel was fully booked up so I couldn't stay at the hostel and I didn't bother to look up any other hostels outside of the area because that means I have to pack up all my stuff go across town right so there was a hotel down the street the Ace Hotel from the hostel oh that's a nice hotel so I'm like I'll stay there and I go I'm like how much is a room for one night like oh it's 200 pounds I'm like okay (laughs) and then I get home and I'm like $400. Four hundred dollars, right? And yeah, I just and then I also crashed. I sold the first car that I got. I got a brand new car, and then I crashed that. Oh, I remember twice, that. Yeah. Fully totaled two cars back to back. Yeah, and within how long? Um, twenty eight days. You must have felt at the second to- the second crash. You must have been at a low place. Yeah, you know the story. I, re- I was I remember seeing you after and yeah. you telling me about it, but like the feeling you must have had. Well, see, the second one wasn't as bad because you were like, "Here we me, go again." It was no, almost it was, funny. No, it was, <laughs> it was like not comically, funny. comically terrible. No, it was like <laughs> I, I was blacked out. Yeah, and so I didn't have the sober thought of uh, fuck. I was right. just like, I need to get out of getting a DUI. Yeah. That's where my head was. I'm like, fuck the car. Fuck everything else. Yeah. I don't want a criminal record. Right. So I think the first one was more embarrassing because I made an illegal U-turn, got hit, trying to get dick at a hostel. <laughs> at a at hostel? the bungalow on Fairfax. <laughs> How do you meet a guy at the bungalow? At the comedy store. Uh, Australian tourists. Oh, I've had yeah. a few of those. Yeah. Australians are hot. Yeah, they're dirty. They are? Yeah, they, like, love to do coke and just, like, they're just, like... I don't think they all like are like that. No, but the ones who go to the comedy store, they're always like, where can I get coke? And so I'm like, you know, the, those are the Australians I'm attracting, or the dirty <laughs> ones. And I had, like, super long purple hair at the time. It's funny, I forgot that I did purple before. But it was, like, a dirty... It was, yeah, and I yeah. had so much acne at the time. Ugh, my life was a mess. Yeah, you are way cuter than you used to be, huh? Oh, 100%. I've gotten so much better looking. It's crazy. You've just gotten style, I think. I think my face is just formed. It's like grown into itself. I don't know what it is, but, but I'm now happy you're with just it. hot as fuck. I'm hoping it keeps going. Oh, well. Yeah. For sure. Wow. You've really, you've had a lot of experiences for a 25-year-old. Yeah. Ryan Seacrest. Do you think if you met Ryan Seacrest and told him about that, he'd remember you? If I told him, yeah, 100%. You're like, I was a little girl. Remember I did the radio segments? He'd be like, oh, yeah. There was a time in high school. It, is that like a blip to him or do you think, like, oh, that's incredible? I think he would remember. Yeah. Yeah. He was never, he was never like in the studio. So it wasn't like I was interacting with him. On a, right, but you know, he still regu- definitely heard them. Yeah, because he would introduce it because yeah. we made it sound like it was live. So right. he'd be listening to a recording and I'd be like, hi, Ryan. He'd be like, Allie, who are we calling today? Um, Today we're going to call <laughs> the bar, you know, whatever. Oh, um, I just thought of something. What? Do you have access to any of these? So my dad has a CD with a couple of the calls on it. Oh, my God. You know, you got to put this on your first album. Yeah. Like stand-up album. You got to cut these between them or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Or just release them now on your social media. I know. I wish there was a way that I could get in contact with Ryan or the people who work there. Like if I could get those interviews that they tried doing. But even the CD, I could rip that CD and put it, give you a copies. Yeah. On the computer or whatever. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. I it's annoying, though, because there were so... I mean, I did it for four years. There were so many good calls. Right. And the CDs are, like, so... They got to exist somewhere, right? 
Yeah. There's I mean, there used can... to be like Yahoo questions about me. Like, is this girl really a child? Like, it's just a voice actor <laughs> pretending to be a kid. Like, I'm, I'm used to getting, you know, Did you criticism. ever get recognized from it? Yeah. And my dad would try and use it to his advantage a lot. Where, like, my dad would need, like, a rental car and he'd be like, he'd get, like, a Toyota and he'd be like, do you listen to Kiss FM by chance? Do you know Little Allie? That's my daughter. And then he'd pick me up in a convertible. <laughs> but people wouldn't recognize well, me. It would be like, I'd right. be at, like, well, like, my friend's house voice. and they'd yeah. hear my voice and their aunt would be like, oh, are you the little girl from the radio? That happened a lot. That's pretty cool. And then I got to be in, like, our Christmas parade in Long Beach. 100% why you do stand up now. Yeah. You are just chasing that Ryan Seacrest high. <laughs> That's all I want. I want to be back on air with Ryan. What's Ryan up to now? He should use you in something. He should say, I got little Allie back. But then I'm always like, my act is so inappropriate at times that I don't even know if... You're fine. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, anything else you want to say to the world? No. Nope. I feel like I learned a lot about you today. Yeah. It's a good thing. I could keep talking to you, you know? You're one of those people for me. Which people? Like someone who I can just hang out with and like sit around with and not say anything. Oh, yeah. Or and those just, are like, the best friends. About, like yeah. someone I could go on my phone with. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I could take, I could just go on my phone for an hour and sit next to each other and just do jack shit. That's why I think at some point we'll be together. <laughs> Because we know about just because we'll you know both we be hang. fed up with trying to search for something when we're very comfortable with each other, it won't even be about like, like it won't even be like a sexual hey, relationship. If you continue to get hotter, you never know. Yeah, thank you. No, you're, God bless. Uh, the problem is, I'm in love with your sisters. Yeah, I know that would be pretty. Awkward. So, like every family reunion, I'd be trying to get them or have a threesome with you and her. It'd just be probably start a lot of drama. Are they? Either of them single right now? They're married. Both of them are married now? Yeah. What about, you think they're both going to last, do you think? Um, I guess you wouldn't be able to say. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because I could place bets now and then in a year from now be like, actually. I'll check back in a year. Yeah. Check back uh, because I think they're supposed to be with me. We'll see. Yeah. I'll let you know if they get divorced. That's what I mean. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll keep you yeah I don't want. I'm not a homewrecker. No. I hope. I hope that their marriages go on forever. But statistically speaking, one of them's gonna get a divorce. Yeah. And statistically speaking, because your parents are divorced, they're both gonna get a divorce. Yeah. I'm definitely I'm gonna still get a in divorce. This. I haven't even been married, and I've been divorced. <laughs> I've, I've. Have you ever been engaged? No. Have you ever talked about marriage with either, either of your two boyfriends? No. Probably my first boyfriend in a very unhealthy, toxic way. <laughs> yeah. You know, like your first relationship, yeah, you're like, we're going to get married and live here. And- 100% miss those days. I miss that relationship. I want a toxic relationship again. Okay. <laughs> We've been um, talking for a while. I don't know how long. An hour and 15 minutes. It's got to be longer than that. I got here at like 530. Oh, yeah. An hour and, a, hour and a half. Wow. wow. Was, who kn- it flew by for me. So uh, thank you for doing the podcast. Check out Allie Makovsky online. She is just a... Oh, my God. Could you see my phone in the... No. She's just a whirlwind of a comedian. I've watched her going from the young girl that snuck into the comedy store into a hot girl with purple hair (laughs) on a podcast. And it's just been such an incredible journey. And you should follow her for the rest of it. What an unflattering seat position I chose to... You look great. You're probably going to get DMs from doing this podcast of guys wanting to hook up with you. I know. It's going to be cool. I have so many (laughs) simps. I have so many simps in my DMs. What's the simp? Guys who are like, just date me, ruin my life, choke me, spit in my face. I love you. That's awesome. It's cool, but it's also kind of (laughs) scary. But I do like it. But it's weird. But it's fun. I like that. I want that for me. Uh, God bless you all. And God bless the United States of America. Bye. You're listening to, you're listening to unlicensed. 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 Therapy with Ari Manis. Ari Manis.